Hello, in this episode we're looking at the node editor and this is level 2. We're looking at the mix RGB shader and the color ramp. This is all part of a much bigger course on gabit.co.uk where you can go right through from beginner to advanced levels and this is level 2 of the node school in the beginners section. If you're having difficulty you can go across to the discord server, links in the description, where there's lots of helpful people discussing my videos and showing off their work and general blender discussion. You can also support me on Patreon, again links in the description. So here's the startup file as normal, and I'm going to subdivide my cube with Ctrl 4 and smooth it out, and I'll put a plane on the floor with Shift A, plane, and scale it up. That should be nothing new, that's what I did last time. And let's grab this in the Z axis by 1, so it's above the plane. Let's just scale it up a bit, so it definitely hits the floor, there we go. I'm going to bring this window up and change it to the node editor and I'm going to make sure I'm in cycles. This should all work in Eevee as well and in my last video I talked about the node wrangler. Do make sure you've got that installed. The link's in the description and I'll put a card in the corner for that video if you need to watch that. But if you go to file add-ons type in node wrangler and just tick that make sure it's installed. It comes with all the latest versions of Blender. So I've got my ball selected and I need to choose use nodes. And I also need to make sure my ball is unwrapped, so into edit mode, unwrap, smart UV project for now, and press OK. Let's go into our nodes, move this up just a touch more, and with the node wrangler installed you can press Shift S and change that shader to the principled BSDF. Gives a much more realistic look. So the first thing I want to do is add a texture in here. If you've got the node wrangler installed you can press Ctrl T over the principled shader and it will bring this up. I'm not going through the texture coordinates. And in fact you don't need them so I can delete both those and that will give me an image texture and the other way to do it is just shift a texture image texture so I've got my image texture in and I'm just going to open a random image texture for now I often like to go for these wood textures because they illustrate my points well so there we go what does that look like with shift Z over the viewport and it looks like a strange wooden football kind of fun really so if I bring this over here and I'm going to duplicate it shift D and if I want to mix these two together, I can Alt right click and it creates what's called a mix RGB shader there. I can press on the tiny orange arrow to make it bigger. So Alt right click and drag the two together. The other way to do that is to Shift A and it's under color mix RGB. And then we need to link those up. And I'm Control right clicking and dragging to link them together. Now of course these are identical at the moment. So it's showing no difference here. So what I'm going to do for now is just cut one of these off so we've got a color input mixed with the image texture. So if I put this to the blue, we've got a sort of blue wood. And if I put this all the way up to one, it will show you the bottom shader. And all the way down to the bottom, it will show you the top. Now the other thing about the mix shader is that you've got different blend modes. Now you might want to look all these up, but the ones I use the most are multiply, screen, and overlay. Multiply will darken your image, screen will lighten it, and overlay does a bit of both. So with multiply, the dark bits of your image that's coming in here will affect this image. I'll show you what I mean, and to do that I need to darken this image. So I'm going to pull that that way, I'll link it up with control, right click and drag, and I'm going to put a color ramp in here to darken it. So shift A, and then converter, color ramp. This is something that's really commonly used along with the mix RGB and they're probably the most important shaders when you're doing PBR texturing to change the tone of your images. So in order to darken it I will have to bring the black up but let's see the results of that by pressing Control shift and left clicking and there is our image texture coming into our color ramp. So if I click on the image texture with Control shift you can see that's what the color looks like and then if I click on the color ramp with control shift it goes into the color ramp and that turns it into a black and white image. So if I control shift back on my principal shader I go back to where I was and let's just have a look at what's happening. If I pull it all the way up to one we're looking at the bottom one and therefore we're looking at this color ramp. If I bring it all the way back down we're looking at the top one and there's in between sort of gray colored wood. So let's bring it all the way back down, so we're just on this one. I'll turn this to multiply. Nothing will happen because the bottom input is on a factor of zero, so it's not influencing this texture in any way. 
and now I start bringing the factor up, you should see the effects of the multiply on the wood. And you can see it's kind of adding an ambient occlusion effect. So darkening the wood wherever, if I control shift on this, wherever it's dark in here, it will be multiplying it to this color over here. So again, I'm just control shift clicking on these to see the effects. That's what it's like without the color ramp being affected through the multiply. That's what it's like with. So let's bring it all the way back down. So that's the original color and I'll change this to screen. So now if I remind us what this looks like, the light bits will be lightened from this texture. So let's control shift on this one, bring it up slowly. And you can see it's starting to lighten those areas up where this is bright. That's what it looks like without the screen and that's when it's affecting this color. Now the overlay is the last one that I think is worth noting. If I click on overlay, you can see what that's done. So I bring it down to the original and then I bring it up. It gives an interesting effect. Now what it's doing is a bit of both. The dark areas are darkening and the light areas are lightening. So it's adding more shadow and more highlights. Now the color ramp doesn't only turn it from black and white. You can affect how black and how white. So if I stay on overlay, and I want to bring the blacks up a bit more. I can click on this little nodule here, bring up the blacks and you can see I'm adding more shadow into the shadow areas. If I wanted it looking really odd, I could bring then the whites up. It's adding more highlights to the highlight areas. What I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate this texture, bring it down here and bring it into a bump. Shift A, Vector, Bump Map. And bring the color into the height information and the normal into the normal. And then I'll control shift click on the principal shader and you can see the bump now. So with our bump on, the dark bits of our image are going inwards and the light bits are going outwards. So you can imagine this is a good place for a color ramp. If I shift D, and pull this down, you can see it's added more bump. So if I bring the blacks down, we should see less indents. If I bring the lights up, we should see less highlight bumps sticking out. So you can start to see the usefulness of the color ramp node. So let's bypass that and just delete it for now. So with my bump in, I'll just pull back the overlay effect. You can see the bump there and it looks quite flat. But as I bring the overlay up, where my blacks are pulled up and my whites are pulled in, you can see it adds this kind of ambient occlusion with the highlights being lightened as well. It gives it the illusion of depth. So all the way up and all the way down. So you can see it looks washed out and flat looking. And there with the overlay, remember, which is making my darks darker and my lights lighter, it gives the illusion of depth. Brings out the highlights and darkens the dark spots. So what you may find is that you've got your color going straight in and a bump map, but it's looking a bit flat. That's where you can add your color ramp in with an overlay or a multiplier if you just want dark spots or a screen if you just want the highlights increased. Mix those together and pull it into the base color and you've got lots more depth in the colors. The thing to remember is this mix shader. Your bottom texture is the influence and it's full influence when it's a factor of one and you can change the amount of influence it has with your factor. Now another place this is useful is on a PBR texture. So I'll delete all these by box selecting and deleting. Click on my principal shader and press Control Shift T with the node wrangler installed and go into one of my PBR texture packs. I'm going to choose the color, the gloss and the normals and press principal texture setup and that will set it up for me with the mapping and what the node wrangler notices is that it's not using roughness even though it's called this node roughness it's using a gloss texture so it has to invert it and we can see what these look like by pressing control shift on each of them there's the base color there's the roughness and there are the normals let's look at the roughness for a moment so that's what it looks like with the gloss but with the invert it's much rougher so if I look at my final result, it's all rough. I'm going to put an HDRI in the background so we can see the results of reflections. Click on my world tab, use nodes, shift A, texture, environment texture, hook it up and then find a environment texture. There we go. Now we can see the results of the reflections. Back to my object. Now let's say I wanted to change the amount of roughness and didn't feel that this was the texture that I quite wanted. So let's move these out of the way slightly, pull this back. What we can do is add a color ramp in here. So I'll shift S on this to change it to the converter color ramp. That's obviously made it very shiny, 
because now we've got this if I press control shift on that and it's got a fair bit of black in it which is the reflectivity so if I bring in the whites more so let's bring it to about there where it's a bit whiter if we click back on the principal shade with control shift now it's a lot rougher let's go to our color ramp again bring up the blacks this time so I'll pull the whites in bring up the blacks let's just see what that looks like first very black so let's see that and that should be very reflective which we can't see that well at the moment so I'll put another object in to see the reflectivity it's still not that great to be honest so what I'm going to do is cut off the normal map and then you'll be able to see the shininess much easier of course the bumpier the object the more the reflections are kind of scattered which makes sense I'll put my samples up slightly as well and turn it to GPU to make it run a bit faster so GPU compute as you can see it goes a lot quicker and I can turn my samples up that's something to bear in mind really if you've got a very bumpy normal map your reflections obviously won't be so sharp and they'll be more scattered so I've just turned that off for now just so we can see what's happening with the color ramp more so remember it's all black at the moment so it's very shiny back on the principal shader nice and shiny but if I change this and bring some of the whites back in by bringing this slider down somewhere about there it's still going to be very shiny but we can see a bit more of the roughness coming through back on the color ramp let's bring this all the way back down so it's still fairly shiny so it's quite dark looking back on the principal shader but it is certainly rougher in places back on the color ramp let's bring the whites back in back on the principal shader and we can see that's a fair bit rougher if you do want to have an invert you can of course swap these around and that will invert your colors so that's swapped around and this is what it looks like normally now if it's still a bit awkward because you think well the blacks are still too black and I'm not getting rid of the blacks when I pull the whites up well you can actually click on if I zoom in a bit these sliders here if I click on them I can get to the color down here so let's say it's still too shiny click on the black and then you can make that a grayish color and then there's very little shine in it you can also add areas in here and then change the color of those as well and you can add some strange effects to the roughness in that sense there's not really a lot of reason to do that in this scenario though so we'll undo that by pressing the minus button let's see the effect of that if I control shift and we're seeing a rougher ball especially if I put my normals in now there we go so hopefully that's given you an overview and an introduction of the mix RGB and the color ramp the more you use them the more sense this will make and it's one of those things that's quite difficult to demonstrate you kind of just have to get used to it by using it a lot and noticing the subtle differences and changes okay thanks for watching